Hello commanders and welcome in Mediodesk Gaming in a new Conflict of Nations tutorial. Today we are going to rank the armored vehicles from worst to best. I am going to start with position 5 as the worst one today. It's going to be the amphibious combat vehicle. The amphibious combat vehicle needs first a research of an armored fighting vehicle to be unlocked. And level 2 amphibious combat vehicle needs a research of level 4 armored fighting vehicle. So the destiny of this one is related directly to the destiny of this one. Let's have a look at the features and the strength of this unit. It can reveal stealth, also it has scouting abilities and the most important thing is amphibious. Yet I find this thing the most useless thing in Conflict of Nations. Amphibious is not really a game changer ability, it's not that important. Because if you are going to send tanks, first of all, I'm going to explain what is this amphibious. You do not need uh, harbors or naval bases to enter lands. You can enter from any kind of province that is related with waters. But I find it useless. Why? Why would you send uh, a tank from a province inside the land? You, can, you are going to be visible. And the enemy is going to destroy you while you are in waters or while you are disembarking. Also, you are going to need marines to be able to take lands because this tank does not conquer lands. In that case, we are going also to invest on marines and do the research of the marines and also build army base level 2, naval base level 2 and recruiting, recruiting office level 1. Actually, we are going to lose a lot of time to be able to have an amphibious combat vehicle. This is why I'm finding it so useless. In position four, I am going to choose the armored fighting vehicle. Why? First of all, the research is expensive. Also, the mobilization costs, they are also expensive. 1,600 components, 650 electronics. This is important here. And also, we need army base level two and arms industry level one. <coughs> the good thing about the armored fighting vehicle, they have a decent damage versus infantry. But when I see this, army base level 2 and these costs, why I do not make main battle tanks? Actually, I favor main battle tanks over the armored fighting vehicles because we have better damage and we will be having more hit points. And actually, it's the same costs as the main battle tanks. They are a little bit and slightly more expensive than the armored fighting vehicles. So I would rather choose the main battle tank over the armored fighting vehicle and this is why in position 3 we chose the main battle tank. Yes, it has weaknesses and strengths. What is the first bad thing about the main battle tank? The cost, it is very expensive. And also the daily upkeep. If you early game make let's say 10 main battle tanks your components production is going to suffer. It's going to suffer heavily from the daily upkeep and the mobilization costs. Also, no perks, no features here. It can be only airlifted from a place to another since level six. It can be airlifted. So from level one to level five, you are going to suffer to move your mobile tanks all across the country. This is a very bad thing that mobile tanks, they are classified as a very heavy units. You can see here the speeds, uh, 0.43 in mountains, 0.65 in suburbans and 0.65 in cities. But the good thing about mobile tanks is the hit points, a very high amount of hit points. Let's go to max level and see the true strength of the mobile tanks. 13 versus soft targets, 13 versus hard targets. Uh, they have a lot of penalties in mountains and jungles, but also they have bonuses in open ground and desert. In open ground, it is going to be fast with 1.5 speed. And with the military logistics, it can be fast. And also the hit points, they are 55. In high intensity battles like the battle royale or in the uh, alliance challenges, we aim to use the main battle tank as a shield for our multiple rocket launchers. We use it as a bait to um, lure the enemy to land his uh, strikes from his um, multiple rocket launchers on our main battle tanks. Because 
imagine a stack of 10 main battle tanks is going to be 550 hit points. That is going to take a lot of hits from multiple rocket launchers to take down a stack from this. So here you will be having a window to strike from, uh, have a window of course before he goes back to hit him with your multiple rocket launchers. So yeah, main battle tanks, they can be used very well with as a shield. But like we saw in the Chinese Empire boys, how Algeria used his main battle tanks despite he had level 6 main battle tanks and max level motorized infantries, yet our strikers ate him up, destroyed him, destroyed him to ashes. Why? Because he did not provide anti-air defense over his main battle tanks, so it made them an easy bait for our strikers or attack helicopters or whatever air force you are going to use over these main battle tanks. In the second position, I am going to use and choose the tank destroyer. The tank destroyer is very cheap as you need only 1500 supplies and 1750 rare materials to start the level 1. Also, you are going to need army base level 2 and arms industry level 1 like the main battle tank and also like the fighting vehicle. But it is cheaper than both of them. 1250 components it needs and only 500 electronics and all with it and also the daily upkeep is less and the mobilization time is reduced as well the good thing about the tank destroyer is that has a decent damage versus hard targets against infantry no it's not that important also it has bonuses in cities so if you are going to if you are going to send uh, a heavy stack of let's say mechanized infantry and tank destroyers or tank destroyers with marines to the city yes tank destroyers they are going to wipe out any kind of battle in that city they have uh, less hit points than the main battle tanks but why did i favor the tank destroyer over the main battle tank yes the costs it's very important you can spam a large number of tank destroyers very quickly uh, better than the mebal tanks and uh, more important that the tank destroyer versus mebal tank it's going to be tricky a little bit because tank destroyer is going to have more damage uh, towards tanks more than mebal tank but the mebal tank have more hit points yet the tank destroyer research or the mebal tank or the armored fighting vehicle it's required to be able to unlock the tanker ace let's have a look here the tanker ace in order to start the research of the tanker ace you will need to do a research of the armored fighting vehicle or the main battle tank or the tanker destroyer and in this case we are going to choose the least expensive one which is the tanker destroyer and also it can be used as a shield and you can use it on the battlefield but now i am going to choose the best one in the armored vehicles, in the hard targets, I'm going to choose the combat recon vehicle. Well, my uh, choice has been well studied and I used it in the battlefield and actually the combat recon vehicle is the most used in high elite uh, fights and also in public maps for a simple reason. First of all, the research costs. Second of all, the research time. And third of all, the costs. Also, you only need army base level 1 to mobilize combat recon vehicle, not army base level 2, no arms industries, nothing. And you do not need electronics to mobilize these combat recon vehicles. And we all know, early games in public maps, everyone is going to suffer from rare materials and electronics. Using the combat recon vehicle is going to make everything possible as we do not need a lot of rare materials and also we do not need at all electronics. Another thing very important, early game everyone is going to rely on uh, infantries. So yeah, we have a decent damage versus infantries, we can use the combat recon vehicle very early in the first 10 days and they can destroy your, uh, your enemy. Yes, they have a low hit point and also they have low damage versus tanks, but they, they reveal stealth, they can see. Uh, special forces and also they have scouting abilities what does this mean scouting abilities if it is close within sight range that have a decent sight range in the mountains you can see the exact composition 
of the enemy army within this site range. If you have a stack of tanks and infantry, you will see exactly what we are talking about. Yes, combat recon vehicle made it to first uh, first position in our armored vehicles, and of course, it is very important in elite matches. Also, why? Because this unit can air assault. It gives you more and more choices and more attacking possibilities, as the air assault in tight areas in very uh, advanced warfare is going to give you is going to give you flanking and. Uh, encircling maneuvers and strategies that is going to make this thing possible this is why I chose the combat recon vehicles because of its cheap costs of its fast mobilization times and fast research times and also for its perks it have four important perks that can be airlifted from the level one of course which is also a very important thing it can be airlifted it's very fast you can use it and send it to the uh, front very easily and also it has the scouting abilities and it can it can counter special forces thank you guys for watching today's episode I hope this ranking has given you more information about these units and I am waiting for your feedback in the comment section thank you boys and bye bye